Hi, Kurt. I'm Elizabeth Vandiver. How are you doing? I wanted to send my video in. Uh, I have bipolar and I also have organizational dyslexia and I'm 51 years old and my mom was a recovering alcoholic and she was getting sober when I was 14 and her and my dad were having very bad problems. She talked to me in an inappropriate way when she was drunk about men and sex and she was very angry. And uh, I kind of went crazy myself when I was about 13 and became a little bit psychotic. I was having a very hard time in school and I was having a hard time with my mom's drinking as well. And I became very quiet. And so back in the 1980s, when you saw a child do that, you made them go and live inside psychiatric wards. Back then, the psychiatric profession was very abusive. And so I went and lived inside of Children's Medical Center of Dallas. They had a children's psychiatric ward. And way back when, in 1979, when I was in it, it was a boys ward and they only had a few girls in there. Now this is against the law for them to do it, but I was not traumatized by that, but I did live with a bunch of boys. And later on, I experimented with marijuana and also sniffing paint when I was 14. And I tried to commit suicide by overdosing on Valiums. And uh, I ended up spending a month in St. Joseph's Youth Center. And then my parents made me go to Baylor Psychiatric Ward for adolescents and they were very abusive. And back then they made us sit on hard chair, back hard, hard back chair restriction for hours and hours doing nothing, you know, even if we did the tiniest little thing. And so I got pretty fed up with it and I came up with a plan to get out of there. <laughs> and I decided that if I were mean enough and violent enough that they would send me to a different place. Well, I swallowed some shampoo when they were trying to give me uh, shampoo my hair one time and so they had to pump my stomach and they put me in restraints for a couple of days for that and then at another time uh, one of the staff members Marianne did something to upset me and I put my fist up at her and I acted like I was going to go at her and beat her up but I didn't and uh, they threw me back in restraints and at that time instead of putting me in for a few days or even a week they left me in for four months and so instead of going to another hospital, they physically abused me with restraints. And I used to have a bunch of sores all over my wrists and arms because they would put it on too hard and make me bleed. And they decided that I was too much to handle and that they needed a man uh, to come in at night and be the staff member. And his name was Grady. He was a 31-year-old man. He was very nice looking. The girls liked him. And uh, nowadays, it's illegal for men to work with adolescent girls. But back then, he would be responsible for putting me in bed at night. He would pick me up, put me in bed, crawl on top of me, and tie my arms up. And then in the mornings, he would help me take bed baths. And he would put me in a wheelchair and tie me to the wheelchair so I could go to school. And he would call me baby. And then he would make uh, up excuses to hold my hand and to untie my things a little bit to make sure I could move around and he would touch me and feel on me. He basically molested me for about four months. And then uh, they transferred me to Timberlawn Psychiatric Ward, the adolescent ward there. And uh, that psychiatric ward uh, was a lot better. And uh, the doctor told me that I was being abused by meds from the other place. And they had to walk me in because I was so unable to walk when I first got there and uh, I was so out of it by all the drugs that they'd given me I had to sleep off the drugs and so they let me sleep on the couch for about a week before they put me in a bedroom and got me going to school and um, then that went pretty well um, and when I was there I learned to meet different kids from different backgrounds um, it was kind of a universalist experience for me, even though my family was Christian. Uh, I had one Jewish girlfriend. We had a United Methodist minister who came in once a month and gave church service, but they also did a Jewish service for Barbara. 
and I had a girlfriend named Chris and we used to do the Jewish service with her. So it was an interesting experience. And then uh, I went to Terrell State Hospital where I had my first boyfriend that I fell in love with. And he was an atheist. And he taught me some things about life that I didn't know as well. And then uh, I went home and Terrell State Hospital told my parents, now she's been in the mental ward for two or three years. Nobody's ever spent that much time and not spent the rest of their lives in psychiatric wards. Get ready because she will spend the rest of her lives being in and out of psychiatric wards or prison for her whole life. And I got out of there and I never went back. And I had a 95% chance of either spending my whole life in prison or my whole life in psychiatric wards. And I beat the odds. I never went back and I've never stepped foot into a jail. Now, I'm in somewhat of a bad place now or in somewhat of a good place. I had big, bad physical issues with hernia and I had to end up getting on to social security. And when I finally got my operation last year, I'd gotten up to 350 pounds, but uh, I ended up with a bad infection and I was in the hospital and old folks homes for months. And then I ended up dropping down to about 240. And I have had a couple of jobs at home. I found out that I, I have a very good talking voice and I do well on the telephones. And I have had a few years of experience in telemarketing, but it's been really hard finding telemarketing jobs at home. And when I find them, I either get taken advantage of or something happens to them um, because I don't have the computer skills and I don't really have a, a nice computer. This is a Chromebook that I'm on now. So I'm still getting my shit together even at the age of 51. But I'm, I'm determined to do it and I'm determined to get paid for a good job eventually. And I'm working on my weight loss. I'm on Social Security for being bipolar. I'm on meds. For being bipolar. I'm on uh, sertraline and also lithium and trazodone. And uh, I'm doing well at home. I'm living in my parents' house and I'm close to my family. And so we're all actually doing very well. But uh, I just think my life is interesting because I did break the mold because all of the, all of the respected professionals in Dallas said that I would never leave a hospital or a prison again. And I have never stepped foot into one again. So I thank you for letting me send you my video. And I appreciate it. And I will send this right out to you. Thank you.